Oh, hello. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, season solicitations, and wipe your feet. My friends have something very special for you. We're not going to open it before Christmas. It's the world's biggest Christmas card. Oh, but sweetheart. Classic Christmas radio theater. God bless us, everyone. Yes, I need him. God bless us, everyone. Featuring some of the greatest Christmas radio shows of all time. Not a boy, Clarence. Not a boy. And now here's your host, the elf that eats the most Christmas cookies, Mr. Wyatt Cox. We go back 76 years, December 22nd, 1945, Grand Central Station, and the miracle for Christmas. Mason Adams stars in this, and I think you will find it. A delightful program. It was originally broadcast Saturday evening, December 22nd, 1945. Some of the headlines, Supreme Allied Headquarters disclosed receipt of a warning that hot-headed Japanese are urging assassination of General Douglas MacArthur. Colonel Herbert Weber of West New Massachusetts, Military Secretary to MacArthur, identified the informant as uh, a self-described Japanese patriot. The U.N. Preparatory Commission's Committee on Sites voted to establish the permanent headquarters of the World Peace Agency somewhere in the eastern part of the United States. Past sorrowing lines of his comrade-in-arms, the body of General George Smith Patton, Jr., born to ancient Villa Rainier, where the warrior will lie in state until funeral services tomorrow. Big three foreign ministers understood to have accomplished the greatest amount of work thus far in their conference when they dispense with all formality and diplomatic procedure at a four-hour and 15-minute session yesterday. Stranded servicemen in West Coast ports number nearly 168,000 today, and the Office of Defense Transportation indicated little prospect of improvement in the transportation problem until after the first of the year. And actor Joe E. Brown took time out from entertaining the troops on northern Luzon in the Philippines last summer to kill two Japs. That from Major General Robert S. Bakelider. He said last night Joe was in there fighting with a carbine. He commanded the 37th Division. He said two Japs went down. Joe got the credit. While the comedian was in Columbus with the show Harvey, he was reluctant to discuss the incident. Well, there you go. The USO entertainers did more than just entertain. Those some of the news stories from the newspapers of Saturday, December 22nd, 1945. On your radio, Grand Central Station, Miracle for Christmas, next on Classic Christmas Radio Theater. Now on Classic Christmas Radio Theater, go back 76 years, December 22nd, 1945. Grand Central Station's production of Miracle for Christmas. From New York, Pillsbury's Best Enriched Flour brings you Grand Central Station. year, Pillsbury Mills of Minneapolis presents with pride Grand Central Station's traditional Christmas play, a drama you will long remember. 
after the train from Albany pulled in, no one, not a single person, actually saw the young man with soft brown hair and soft brown eyes come through the gate. Still unseen, he walks the length of the great waiting room. Now strangely tranquil as travel ebbs on Christmas Eve. Quietly, he goes out the door, down the street, and then up the broad marble stairs of the hospital. When the girl at the switchboard turns to him... What can I do for you, sir? Without saying a word, he gives her a card. (gasps) She's startled by the name on it and instantly announces him to the hospital superintendent. Dr. Mason is here to see you. Mason? Dr. Mason who applied for an internship? Yes, Dr. Garrett, it is Dr. Mason from Albany. But that... But that's impossible. Shall I ask him about the telegram? No, 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 I'll do it. Send him in, please. Yes, sir. Uh, Dr. Garrett will see you, sir. First door to the left. Dr. Mason? You are Dr. Mason? I'm sorry that I was delayed, Dr. Garrett. Well, I... But just ten minutes ago, I... Yes. Ten minutes ago, you received a telegram. Why, that's right. I know. From your mother. I know. But, man, I... Well, look at it. It says that you... That I was killed. Do you mind if I tear up that telegram, Dr. Garrett? Well, I... I don't understand. I I was so unnerved by that wire. I I counted so much on your being here tonight, Christmas Eve. A night always busy with calls. You are short of interns. Oh, yes. Mason, these are the slums. Walk through block after block and you won't see a doctor shingle. Not one. The people here are too poor. They know only one healer. The intern and his ambulance. And tonight, night of mercy and goodwill, they would have cried out in vain... Well, now that you've come, I won't have to say to the suffering, wait, wait. There's only one ambulance tonight, and that's out on a call. Wait and suffer. I have no one to send to you because Dr. Mason was killed. Uh, uh, it's good that you're here, Mason. It, it's good. It's good to be here, Dr. Garrett. Well, you better get started. Take this slip down to the storeroom. See that they give you a warm sheepskin coat. Thank you. And a pair of mittens. From there, you go to the ambulance room. I'll have your driver waiting for you. His name is Mac. My name is Mac. The chief says I drive your crate tonight. Crate? Crate, jalopy, sick buggy, ambulance, take your pick. Oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> you green interns, you're all the same. The first time you spy a ambulance, your eyes pop wide like you've seen a heavenly chariot or something. Not me. I've been driving this old baby for eight rotten years. An ambulance, Mac, is a sacred thing. It is a chariot of mercy. Uh oh, two bells. That says, "Come on, Mason. That's your first call." Two three four South Street. 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 Look, pal. Help me out by watching out for cars cutting in at the cross streets. We don't stop for no red lights. What did I tell you? Watch it or we'll both be killed. Holy cow, you new interns. You're all alike. You're always dreaming. You put on a white coat and pants and your head goes up in the clouds. Why are you so bitter, Mac? Why shouldn't I be bitter? If it wasn't for you, I'd be home with the wife right now. You truly believe that only because of me... Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you hadn't showed up, this ambulance would be parked in the garage for crying out loud. I would have had the night off like on a decent job. To you, driving an ambulance is just a job like any other? Yeah, nothing but... Boy, will I be glad when the shift is over. But, Mac, this is Christmas Eve. You're telling me. This is one night at least you could forget that driving an ambulance is a job. This one night, you could look upon it as an errand of mercy. An errand of mercy? (laughs) You know where we're going? To help someone afflicted. Afflicted? Afflicted with alcohol, you mean? I'll give you two to one or we're making a stew call. Stew call? Yeah, Mason. We're risking our necks tearing through traffic to give some drunk a whiff of smelling salts. Any man who cries out for help 
whether he be brimful of drink or empty of blood, his call shall be answered. Yes, yes, you. Okay, Come on, mate. To make it snap quick, I don't Here's your bag, Doc. Thank you, Mac. I won't need it. But he's out cold, Mason. Come on, give him a whip of the stuff. Quit when we blow. Quiet, Mac. Come now. Open your eyes, sir. <laughs> because the drunk sir. <laughs> Look, Mason, here's the spirit of ammonia. Hold it under his nose, will you? <laughs> that always wakes him up. Quiet, Mac. <sighs> Come, sir. Open your eyes. That's right, uh, mate. You just talk uh, pretty to him and he'll open his eyes. Uh, where am I? <laughs> where am I? Why is everybody laughing? What's the matter? Nothing, nothing. Uh, just put your arm around my shoulder. Uh, That's it. Now, um, let me help you to stand up straight. Uh, hey. There. Hey. Now, hey. you feel better? Why, I... Suddenly, I... I feel all right. I feel fine. My head is so clear. Of course, of uh, course. All you needed was to stand on your own two feet. To be strong. Be of good cheer. Gosh, Doc. That's... Sure, wonderful medicine you give me. Medicine? What kind of gag you pull and he didn't give you no medicine? There was nothing the matter with you. You toss off a beer and you lay down in the street like you're out calling. We waste an ambulance on you. I got a mind to take a poke at That'll you. be enough, Mac. Tell me, sir, what is your name? Well, if it's all the same to you... Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Give me a name. He's got to make out his report. Pete Lantern, doctor... Peter, you won't lose faith again. You will stand up, self-reliant, and you will face life courageously and with new hope. Come on, Mason. We ain't got all night. Let's get going. Duck, duck. Yes, Peter? Uh, a Merry Christmas to you, Duck. Thank you, sir. Dr. Mason, I'd like to speak to you. Yes. Mason, Mac tells me you didn't even open your bag on your first call. No, it wasn't necessary. Well, now, don't misunderstand me, Mason. I, I can't begin to tell you how thankful I am that you're with us this evening, but... Uh, but from now on, I'm not to use suggestion. Or whatever it was you did use. Please follow standard materia medica in treating your cases. We... You're... You're not offended. Of course not. Oh, that's fine, Dr. Mason. That... Oh, that's your call again. Third floor. 19 Water Street, third floor. 19 Water Street, third floor. Well, Mac, you seem to be good at guessing. You were right the last time. What sort of call is this one going to be? There's no guessing, it's experience. This time it's no drunk. Oh, what do you think it is? A bird, or maybe a debt. Christmas Eve, and someone is to live or die. It is better that one should live on Christmas Eve. Mac, let it be a birth we're going to. No difference to me, Doc, a bird or a debt. I just drive. How long have you been doing it, Mac? Ah. Oh, like I told you. Eight rotten years, that's how long. What you call eight rotten years were truly eight glorious years, filled with service to your fellow men. Cut the chatter, Mason. This is it. Number 19 is Red Frick House upstairs. Come on, make a snap here. Third floor rear. Tears on Christmas Eve, young man. I'm afraid you're too late. Uh, you thought I'd be a pretty wrong, Mason. It sure looks Wait, like... Wait, Mac. Don't say it. No, no. Perhaps we're not too late. 
Tell me, how is the mother? She's all right. But our baby... Yes, your baby. Crippled. Terribly crippled. I... We prayed for our child to be born on Christmas Eve. Oh, Lord, we'd be so happy tonight. Come now, come. No tears. Not on Christmas Eve. I'll have a look at the infant. Wait here, boys. Make it snappy, Mason. That Garrett's always nervous when all the ambulances are out. Uh, it's only nine o'clock. idea of bringing a kid out here. Oh, but, but then, hold him, doctor, please. Of course. There, there you are. Ah, the child knows his father. Yes. He knows me. He knows me. But he'll hate me when he's old enough to realize it. Doctor. Yes. His arms. His arms. What about the kid's arms? They're straight. Straight as arrows. So what? But but before they were terribly twisted. Both his arms were terribly crippled. You can see for yourself the child is normal. But but I tell you, before when I looked at I swear they were twisted. And now... You were under great tension. Perhaps your imagination... Yes. 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 Oh, my little son. Aren't his tiny fingers so tiny? And now go in and tell your wife truthfully that her baby is normal in every way. Show her. Yes. Yes. We both look forward to a happy Christmas Eve. It is. Remember, tears are not for Christmas Eve. Hey. Ah, come on, Mason. Forget all that good fairy stuff. This fella's hopped up enough as is. Let's go. Yes, Mac. Oh, doctor. Yes? Oh, oh, oh Mary... Merry Christmas, Doctor. Thank you. A Merry Christmas to you, sir. Mason. Dr. Mason. Yes, Dr. Garrett, you've been looking for yes, me. Yes, I... Oh, um, only one bell. Go on, Dr. Garrett. Well, I must speak to you, Mason, about, about the telegram. Yes? The telegram which said that Dr. Mason was killed. The one you said was a mistake. Did I, Dr. Garrett? I've just spoken to the center of that telegram. I have just finished talking to Dr. Mason's mother on the long-distance telephone. That's my call. I'm sorry, I no. must go, Dr. Now, wait, wait, man, wait. I want to talk to you. Listen to me, please. Dr. Mason was killed. Do you hear? Three hours before you walked into my office, he was killed while driving to the Albany Railroad Station. And his mother saw him die. Well, Mac, what is this call going to be? Uh, uh, a birth or a death? I don't know, Mason, but I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like this one. There, there, there's, there's something about this call. It gave me a funny chill all of a sudden. Because it's in your neighborhood? Ah, uh, uh, what do you think this call is going to be? Because it is your wife. Kelly, is this job a rotten job, Mac? Now that you can rush a doctor to her side, is this ambulance still a crate? Now that it's speeding to answer your own wife's cry of pain. Stop that kind of talk, will you? You're trying to make me think something's happened, Ellie. I ain't afraid. So I'll say it again. Yeah, driving this crane is still a job and a bum one at that. And the eight years... Rotten years. Wasted years. Could have had my own garage and repair business. I'd be in the chips today instead of... Yes, you would have made more money. Instead of risking my neck driving all night, twisting in and out of hell pillars, skidding on slippery car tracks. Why, Mac? 
Why did you do it? How many times I gotta tell you that nothing in this whole cockeyed world could have kept me sitting back of this wheel except my wife. If it wasn't for earlier... What's the matter, Mac? Uh, nothing, I guess. That house we just passed, that was ours. And, uh... Uh, the lights are out. Is that unusual? Oh, no, no. Just means I ain't home. She, she, uh, she's probably going down to the corner as far as the drugstore. Yeah, Ellie walks the dog there every night about this time. And, and... Yes, Mac? The call we're going to is that drugstore. Yes, Mac. Mason, you got a hunch what it is. Tell me what it is. It is not a birth, Mac. Take her to the hospital, Mac. And the conclusion of Grand Central Station's production of Miracle for Christmas, as it was broadcast December 22nd, 1945, comes up next. I'm Wyatt Cox. You're listening to Classic Christmas Radio Theater, a special holiday presentation of your favorite radio station. Here's a great thing to consider doing right now before the end of the year. Call MediShare and find out just how much you would save by switching to MediShare, the affordable alternative to health insurance. When you call, you'll get some good news and probably be very happily surprised, too. The typical family saves $500 a month, but you might save even more. It's so worth it to at least find out. And you'll see why more than 400,000 people are already members. MediShare is a Christian community that shared more than $4 billion in each other's health care costs. It really is remarkable, and they're very easy to talk to. And here's the thing. If you join before the end of the year, they'll waive your new member fee. That's another $170 you'll save. I'll give you the number here in a second. The call, and you'll get a price within two minutes. And again, the deadline is December 31st, so call now. You'll save even more. Call 833-34-BIBLE. That's 833-34-BIBLE. 833-34-BIBLE. Thanks for tuning in to Classic Christmas Radio Theater here on your favorite station. There was no real Grand Central Station, because what everybody referred to as Grand Central Station was actually Grand Central Terminal. So, you know, I mean, everybody knew, but that's how it was referred to as, and the real name was Grand Central Terminal. This episode stars Mason Adams, and you remember him probably... He did all the Smuckers commercials on TV. Uh, with a name like Smuckers, it has to be good. And uh, also did uh, was in Lou Grant. He was the editor uh, with work with Lou and Lou Grant. But the conclusion of Grand Central Station from 76 years ago, December 22, 1945, comes up next on Classic Christmas Radio Theater. Now the sad yet joyful conclusion of Grand Central Station, Miracle for Christmas, from 76 years ago, December 22, 1945, on Classic Christmas Radio Theater. 812 East River Road. Come, let's get ready. The next call will be ours. 812 East River Road. Yes, you heard. The other ambulance just went out. Are you crazy? My wife is upstairs in the operating room, and you expect me to leave the hospital? To go out and drive? There are people who need us, Mac. Our work tonight is not yet finished. But Ellie needs me. What do I care about other people? There are people, Mac, who will cry out for help. As your wife did, we will answer. Not me. I ain't moving. It is Christmas Eve, Mac. Christmas Eve? What a Christmas present I got. <laughs> Six four West Street. It's our turn, Mac. Six four West Street. All right, Mason. Six but this four is West my last Street. trip for the night. No, not for the night, forever. I'm through, do you hear? All washed up for good. <laughs> I'm 
terribly sorry. We did the best that we could. Die? Ellie's dying? And I... She... She asked for you, Mac. Just once. Was while you were out on that West Street call. Then she lapsed into coma. Ellie? Ellie? Isn't there a chance, Doc Garrett? I... I doubt it. While I'm out with the crepe, my wife calls for me, and now she's unconscious. Think of others. Think of others, he said, because it's Christmas Eve. What are you going to say now, Mason? You took me from me. You made me go out and drive that rotten ambulance. Well, she... She... <laughs> you went to help others. To bring aid to the suffering. What a consolation that is. Remember how the old woman blessed you. With tears in her eyes. Oh, I can't think of nothing. But Ellie's going. You with your big ideas and your fine speeches. What do you know about sorrow and suffering? All that there is to know, my son. Just now when you... When you said that for a... For a second you got old. You look more than a thousand years old. God. I must be seeing things like that Count Ellie is leaving me and I'm... Crazy. Crazy with grief and sorrow. Grief and sorrow for you. Yet how much you did to relieve others of that pain. It, it, it's funny, Mason, but... Yes, Mac? Well, when, when you said those words, I, I... I thought of my eight years. The eight rotten years... And, and they didn't, they didn't, they didn't seem so bad. Not anymore. Now I, 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 I kind of like them. Sorrow worketh repentance. You should, Mac. You should glory in them. Eight years of bringing a healer, healer to the suffering. Eight years of rushing the torn and the smashed to the hands of the mender. Yeah. The words, they just, they just, they just take the pain right out of me. They, they just... Draw it out. Now that your work for this night is finished, Mac, I will walk home with you. Go home? Well, Elliot... <laughs> yes. Okay, if you say so, Mason. But for the life of me, I don't know why I'd take your word. break I got on Christmas Eve. You love her a great deal, don't you? Yeah. Soon, it will be midnight. A merry Christmas. How did she greet you each night when you returned from your driving? How did Ellie greet... Uh, why, why do you ask that, Mason? Tell me, Mac... I want you to say it. Well, she... Tell me. She, she's like a, like a happy, anxious kid. She, she'd go out and put on a porch light. Didn't matter even if the weather was terrible. I used to boil her out for it. Tell her she'd catch pneumonia. But, but she'd always put on a porch light and stand outside there waiting for... Waiting for her shining night returning from his errands of mercy. As soon as she'd see me come around her next corner, she'd call to me. And now, will you continue your driving? Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm sticking to it, Mason. Even though Ellie won't be around, I, I'm sticking. This is your corner. Yeah. Look to your house, my son. The light. A porch light. It's on. Mason. Your eyes. Mason. Mason. Where are you? Look to your house, my son. No. <gasps> oh, it, it can't be. No. It's Ellie. Ellie, darling, it is you! Thank God! 
Thank God. And forgive me. I did not know who you were. From 76 years ago, December 22, 1945, Grand Central Station. Now, an episode of Lum and Abner, their traditional Christmas story. This goes back 75 years, December 25, 1946. This being the Christmas season, Lum and Abner and their sponsors wish that they might do something for you, their radio listeners, that would add still more pleasure and enjoyment to the occasion. With this thought in mind, your old Pine Ridge friends are repeating their traditional Christmas show. Like the narrative of the nativity itself, Mom and Abner's Christmas story has become more beautiful and meaningful with the passing of the years. It was in 1933 that they first told this simple legend of a humble event that took place here in America in Pine Ridge, a tale which reflects Bethlehem's wondrous miracle. And now, once more, we invite you to listen to Lum and Abner's Christmas Story. As we look in on the little community of Pine Ridge today, a picture of complete peace and contentment greets our eyes. It's a clear, still evening this Christmas tide night, and the whole countryside is wrapped in a clean, white blanket of snow which has fallen rather heavily all day long. Here and there on the deserted streets, we see an occasional home with the lights of a Christmas tree in the front window still twinkle in the dark of the night. And as we pass through town and come to the outskirts, we catch up with three old fellows trudging along through the snow on the road which leads from Pine Ridge out into the countryside. Getting closer, we see there are Lum, Abner, and Grandpappy Spears. And as we join them, we find that they're on a real Christmas mission. Yeah, sure, we're headed right to hire you, Grandpap. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know this is the way, Abner. Doc Miller rode his horse over here. He sees his tracks there in the snow. Well, it must be the old Gaddis place, then. Yeah, that's just about where it's at, all right. There ain't nothing but the barn left over there, though. That house burnt down two or three years ago. Yes, Doc says it's due east from that road where we turned off. Due east? Yeah, which way is east? I ain't pay no attention to the direction. Wait a minute, whereabouts is the east star? There it is, right ahead of us. We're going right, man. Don't worry about that. Yeah, we can just follow the east star. Yeah, that ought to lead us to it, all right. How'd you find out about these folks, Grandpap? Well, Doc Miller and his woman had dinner over at our place. And we were sitting there visiting after we got done eating, and the telephone rung and told Doc to get right over here. Well, who done the call? Oh... Some feller named Joe something or another. Forget what he did call his name. He had went over to some neighbor's house to call. Said they'd been into the county seat to pay their taxes and work no room at the hotel, so they come out here to this old barn to spend the night. Well, this ain't fitting weather to have to stay out in the barn. And they said they were sort of expecting the baby to be born tonight, huh? Yeah, that's the reason they called Doc Miller. <laughs> What's the matter, Abner? I don't guess my arms is getting tired here, fellas. Well, here, let me carry them blankets a while, and you can carry this oil heater. <laughs> is that box of groceries getting heavy, Grandpa? No, I'm all right. I ought to be there directly anyhow. This snow sure tires a body out walking through it, you know it. Yeah, well, maybe we're walking a little too fast for you, Abner. Here, you take the lantern, too. Oh. Yes, sir, it's mighty thought of you fellas to come over here tonight this way. I sort of hate to call you to get out on Christmas, but after Doc left, uh, me and the woman got to talking about how pitiful it was that that couple was having to stay out here in this barn with nothing to eat and all. Well, I'm just glad you called me, Grandpa. Just proud of a chance to help them. Yeah, this makes it seem more like Christmas to me, doing for somebody else. Why, sure. You know, you just can't do things to make others happy without making yourself happy at the same time. 
trouble with a lot of us, we sort of lose the Christmas idea altogether. Think too much about ourselves. Real Christmas spirit is the happiness we get out of making others happy. Yeah, yeah, that's right. There we was now, just sitting there at home. Thought we was enjoying ourselves. And these folks out here spending Christmas in an old barn at the way. No, there just wouldn't have been no Christmas to it if you hadn't called us up, Grandpa. Yeah, well, I know I could depend on you fellers. Now, if it's the old Gaddis place, we ought to be able to see it from the top of this hill here. Wait a minute, I believe that's the barn yonder, ain't it? Yep, yep, that's where they're at. Now, well, that's due east from where we was at, all right, sir. There's the east star right over the top of the barn there. Yeah, yeah, there's Doc's horse tied to the fence there. Yeah, yeah this is the place. See the light shining through the cracks in the walls. Yeah. Yeah, sir, it's just a shame that them folks never let some of us know they needed a place to stay. We've got plenty of room over at the place, and we've just been plumb glad to have them. Now, yeah, this man that called Doc said they was looking for a place to stay in, seeing this barn weren't being used, so they just put up there for the night. Well... Uh, whereabouts do they live, Grandpa? Uh, did he say? Yeah, yeah, they're from over about Pleasant Valley somewhere. Pleasant Valley. Yeah, he told Doc he never had no cash money, taking every nickel he had to pay his taxes, but said if he'd make the call, he'd work it out as quick as he could. <laughs> well, old Doc never refused a call in his life, I don't reckon. No, no. I've known him to get up in the dead of night in the worst kind of weather. To go call on the sick when he knowed before he went that he would never get no pay for it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what we do with that old doc here in this community. Lost there's some that says his message is a little old-fashioned. I grant he's I'll take my chances with him every time. Yeah, he's pulled me through the shatters time and again. Yeah, I've always said that Doc never practiced medicine for what money he got out of it as much as he does for the good that he can be to his fellow man. No, sir, if there ever was a man that's got a preserved seat in the better world, it's old Doc Miller. Yeah. yeah. We better not be talking too loud, fellas, and we don't want to disturb him none. Oh, no, no, let's all be as quiet as we can here. Now, we've got to let Doc know we're here somewhere or other. I reckon it won't hurt nothing to tap on the door so her, you know. No, no. Go ahead, Lum. They'll be needing this oil stove in there. I don't hear a sound in there. Well, I don't believe you knock quite loud enough, Lum. Huh? Maybe they never hear you. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Here comes somebody to the door. Oh. <laughs> well, howdy, Doc. Oh, hello there. Well, what are you three old codgers doing out here this time of the night? Why, we just got to thinking after you left, Doc, these folks might be needing something. Yeah, uh, Doc, we brung an oil stove and some bed kippers. And then here's a box of groceries. Well, now, they're sure needing them. Haven't got any heat of any kind in there. Using what little hay was left for a bed, I took and piled it all up in the manger and made a pretty good bed. But now these covers will just come in awful handy. How's the lady, Doc? Oh, getting along as well as could be expected, Tom. I'll take these things on in and have her husband like this heater and warm that place up a little. Uh, you men had better stay out here for a while. Yeah, sure, sure. You go ahead, Doc. We'll wait out here. If there's anything we can do, Doc, just let us know. Yes, all right. Thank you. Uh, oh, Doc, now, what kind of work does this fellow do? Oh, uh... He said a while ago that he was a carpenter by trade, Long. Said he'd been out of work for quite a while, though. Well, here, I'd better get back inside here. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Said he was a carpenter, huh? Yeah. I'm just thinking. We've been talking about building that loading platform at the back door of the store, haven't I? I think it'd be a pretty good idea to get this fellow to help us. Yeah, that's a good idea, Long. Might get him to do a little fixing up in the store there, too, while he's at it. Well, he'll want to be nice wife and baby for a few days now. Oh, sure, sure. Quick as Doc thinks it's safe for him to be moved, I'm going to insist on him coming right over there at our place and staying. Well, yeah, that'd be the best place in the world for him, Grandpa. That woman of yours, Aunt Charity, could take care of him better than anybody I know. <laughs> yeah, she'd get a sight of enjoyment out looking after the baby. <laughs> <laughs> Just loves children. Oh, yeah. That woman of yours, Grandpa, has mothered every youngin' in the whole community. <laughs> That's right. Just thinking here. <laughs> here we are, three old codgers, getting along in years, standing around out here waiting, waiting for a little baby to be born. It's sort of like as if we was waiting for somebody to take our place. Well, of course we 
don't like to talk about this thing, but we've about solved our time, I reckon. Yeah, won't be long before we'll have to move on. Be somebody else to take our place. Yeah, yeah. Don't well, forget about us. It's sort of like the years. Here's 1946, almost gone. There's been a lot of things happening, but they'll soon be forgot. There's been lots of joys and happiness. On the other hand, there's been lots of heartaches, lots of blasted hopes. But there's a new year coming. We'll all get to start all over again. Here come 1947, bringing new hope and new courage. And we're sort of like the years for three old fellas. We're sort of like 1946. We're waiting on 1947. It's a little baby in you Well, it's just like I've always said. Wait, wait a minute. There's somebody coming to the door. Oh, maybe it's not. Hey, any news yet, Doc? Well, men, it's a fine baby boy. Lemon Abner's traditional Christmas story as it was originally broadcast 75 years ago, December 25th, 1946. Classic Christmas Radio Theater, a special presentation of your favorite station. I have a webpage if you'd like to learn more about classic radio collecting. It is classicradio.stream. On many stations, we have another hour straight ahead. If you're with us, I look forward to the pleasure of your company. If you leave us at this time, please accept my warmest wishes for a very Merry Christmas and a happy and prosperous 2022.